Thanks for tuning in to Born to Ride TV, the longest running biker TV show in the world. We salute Dad, our fathers. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are born to ride. We'll go back inside the vault. Classic Father's Day features from 25 years of Born to Ride. Happy Father's Day. And this week, it's Chopper Town, including feature interviews with overall winner James Fish Alcorn from Alleyway Customs. Did I say chill bunnies? And Drew Seamer from Freak Show Fab. Oh, and we get a walkthrough from these guys. And Border Ride's Great American Moto Fest is coming. All this and more here on Born to Ride. Hey, I'm Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. You're watching Born to Ride TV. Oh, yeah. Thanks for tuning in to Born to Ride TV. You know, today's Father's Day, so I have my father here, and I have my children. I'm pretty blessed to have such beautiful children and to be such a young father. And uh, we have three generations right here in front of you. And, uh, Dad, it's good to have you here on Father's Day. Thanks, Ron. And it's good to be here with you three. And uh, believe me, uh, there's nothing like these two. They're the joys of my life, believe me. And uh, you also, you did a good job growing up and becoming what you are today and I sure am proud I'm proud to be a father and a grandfather to these two lovely children well, thanks dad you've always been there for me and uh, to all the fathers out there I want to wish you guys a happy Father's Day and uh, have, we have a great show coming up for you and I just want to say dad I love you and uh, the kids I love you guys too I uh, love you all wonderful Okay, so stay tuned right here for more on Born to Ride. Born to Ride is sponsored in part by Rubenstein Law, 1-800-FL-LEGAL, representing riders since 1988. Offices throughout Florida, 1-800-FL-LEGAL. Okay, I'm coming up to my dad's house today. It's for Father's Day. He doesn't know that he's in the Born to Ride magazine. He's about to find out, and we're about to open the show for Born to Ride's Father's Day episode. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Oh, oh brother, where'd you pick up that picture from? Boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Oh. That's, that's taking me a long way back. Wow. But... Dads take too much credit because most of the credit should go to their sons and daughters because, believe it or not, this guy's done a lot for me. Well, uh, it's Born to Ride and it's Happy Father's Day. It's the Father's Day edition. Just want to welcome everybody to the show. I got my dad. He just saw the Born to Ride magazine for the first time. He didn't know it was the Father's Day edition and he was included in it. What'd you think, Dad? I think it's... Just touching, and I'm really, really touched with it. It uh, shows the love that are in people these days, and uh, we need more of it. And I sure get a lot of love for my my children, and I appreciate it. All right, well, happy Father's Day, Dad. Coming up Thanks. on the show, we got a great story of the Hodge family, a very touching story about uh, Mr. Rowe and his son, and um, a lot of other things right here on Born to Ride. It's all because we care. And happy Father's Day out there to the fathers. And once again, happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks, Ron. I love you and happy Father's Day. I love you too, and I love all you guys. And we'll be right back with more on Born to Ride from the Father's Day episode of Born to Ride. Matt Hotch is one of the most dynamic custom motorcycle builders in the world today. At the age of 10, Matt Hotch was using his father's experience and knowledge to generate tangible creations. His childhood memories that took place in the garage with his dad, Pat Hotch, and his granddad, Joe Hotch, are a direct source of his success today. Pat Hotch, Matt Hotch's father, is no stranger to the world of motorcycle repair. 
and Pat Hotch is truly a success in the field of fatherhood. And no man could possibly want more for their son than what Matt has become not only as a builder, but as a father. I always knew Matt's potential, Pat said, but I never dreamed it would turn out like this. I'm very proud of Matt. It's hard to put into words. As a father, you raise your kids and hope that everything turns out all right. And Matt just took that to a whole new level. Pat Hotch is now retired and works with Matt hands-on in the shop and is a proud grandfather of Matt's son, Ryder, and a set of twins that his daughter Connie had just this year. When I was growing up, my grandfather and my father always had clean garages with pegboards to hang tools and a painted floor, explained Matt. During every family holiday, the guys would always go out to the garage and these are some of the best memories I have shared with both of them. They'd show me how to use all their tools. And just like his father, Matt would rather talk about his son than himself. I'm a new father, he said. It's awesome and pretty unbelievable to have my own son. It's a life-changing event. People can tell you about it, but actually doing it is amazing. So here's an idea for this Father's Day. Don't just tell your dad that you appreciate him. Appreciate him for all he has to offer. Ask him about what he was like growing up and try to find out what made him who he is today. Ask him about his work, his experience and his expertise. Share in his interests and hobbies. This information and the memories that you create with your father may turn out to be unexpectedly valuable, like in the story of Matt Hotch Designs. This Father's Day, we are honoring a special father. Newport Ritchie resident David Rowe's son, Sergeant Mike Rowe, gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Sergeant Rowe was killed in action last year in Iraq. Tragically, it was on the day before his 24th birthday. His father, David, has made it his life's ambition to share his son's story through a custom 1977 Harley Sportster that is wrapped in his son's uniform. The U.S. Military Vets Motorcycle Club recently recognized this act of love and respect and honored David and his son, Sergeant Rowe, at a recent get-together where hearts were touched by his story of the bike, his son, and his son's baby, which Sergeant Rowe never had a chance to know or hold. We're here on the Bud Run, and uh, what we're doing here is uh, honoring Michael David Rowe, his dad here. He honored his son who, who passed away in the... Uh, an IED explosion in Iraq, and he laminated his motorcycle with his son's uniform. And we at the U.S. Military Vest honor this man and his son and the sacrifices the family has made. And I'd like to read a poem that this son, Michael, wrote to him for Father's Day. Father, I will always look on you as a man whose shoes I will never fill, but I will do my best to make the right choices to be as much a man as you. I cherish all your traits. Your hard, earnest work will always inspire me to do my best. Your word is something that you have shown me must be kept. And I admire how you can do that unconsciously. Your kind and open heart will always let me be able to help anyone in need. And the fairness shown to all will always allow me to be impartial. Dad, you are the one in my life that I will always aspire to be like. I will never stop being someone that you can brag about. I want you to know that there is never a day I cannot be with you because we share these great traits you have instilled in me. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for being such a great dad, your son, Michael David Rowe. And today we honor this man and the sacrifices that he's made and so many others for the freedom that we just take for granted. God bless David Rowe. God bless America. God bless my son. That's my hero. Thank you. We'll never forget him. Thank you. They want you to explain the, uh, the items on the motorcycle that you have placed on there from your son's uniform. The, the air cleaner I had made uh, several years ago uh, just had Rowe on it. And when my son passed away, uh, and the idea hit me to make it a memorial to him, I took row off and I put that inscription on there right now. The uniform, I was doing a top end on the bike and uh, it just hit me, I don't know, spiritual inspiration if you will, to make it a memorial to him. So I asked his wife, I told his wife what I wanted to do. 
she consented to it. I spent uh, three hours dismantling the uniform with an X-Acto knife. A friend of mine, uh, AJ from Street Seats, who does interiors for hot rods, he sewed it all together, redid the seat completely. He sewed patches on. Uh, the bike will never be done. I'll always be doing something to it. Uh, right now I'm in the process of making a license plate frame uh, with a cross on the top and the fallen soldier emblem, the boots, the M16 and the helmet. But my, my whole thing is to immortalize my son's memory. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another edition. Born to Ride Live. I am the Flashman, that handsome devil, of course, uh, Dave Nichols, editor and or chief yes. of Born to Ride and Born that to Ride. Hi, yes, everybody. Indeed. Welcome to another wonderful week of Born to Ride Live. Yes, and I indeed. Hear I've heard we might have a special guest today. Flash. We do have a very special guest I'm going to bring in right now. And it is wait a minute. Salvador Dolly. Boo. Oh, hey. Geez. What's happening, guys? Oh, my heart. <clears throat> wow, it's Ron Galati, everybody. Love the, it, uh, love it, love it. Mine, born to ride, and uh, 25 years of quality motorcycle television. Right there, Ron Galati. Ron, what you doing? Oh, man, it's great to be on, guys. What an exciting a show we have planned today. You know, there's, Dave's going to have some breaking news coming up on something very special. It's going to yes, affect indeed. everybody. But... Yeah. Um, you know, Father's Day, what I wanted to touch on is um, Father's Day, how important it is to not only Born to Ride and myself, I lost my dad and years ago, but, you know, the things he instilled in me, I see it now in my son. He's working a job now, and we're getting rave reviews. He's doing great, and it's that family thing for my daughter, my son, but everybody's daughters and sons and family, you know, Father's Day, it's a uh, you know, people that got to ride with their father. This month in the magazine, Dave, you did some amazing articles of people riding together. And, you know, we lived that dream through other people's because we didn't get to do it or if we did or not. And uh, I, I think when all else fails, that's what Born to Ride's about is real people and real emotions, you know. Other magazines, sometimes they forget the holidays, but we did the same thing last month for Mother's Day and right. Women and Memorial Day. And we, we got to touch those things on people and we got to let people know that we really do care. So when you watch the show today, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the emotion of, of fatherhood and you should feel it because it's real and born to ride. It might make you laugh, but it might make you cry, but it's going to take you on travel and adventure. And, and just like this show today, flash, you guys are doing a great job. I'm happy to be here. Got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Indeed. Now, listen, I gotta, I gotta ask you a question, Ron. Has, uh, have the Rays extended uh, a contract to Bruiser yet? I know he's been playing some <laughs> serious baseball, dude. Yeah, you know what? Uh, no, and it, it's really <laughs> hard. It, it's really hard for a, uh, you know, baseball. There's so many kids out there playing baseball in only a few positions, and to get to the major leagues, it's, it's almost like a miracle. But you know what? He's still playing. We're playing travel ball. We got a tournament this weekend. And we're not going to miss a minute of it, you know, because that's how important family is. And, you know, it. we we enjoy it. It might be the last few games he ever plays, but they might not be. So it's all oh, on yes. him, you know. You and, just never know in this day and age. So, uh, Ron, I understand uh, breaking news. We got breaking news that we're breaking on this very show right now. Yeah. Yes, we do. Should I go ahead and tell everybody? Break the news, Dave. Okay. Real boy, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Many of you have heard about the High Seas Rally. It is a cruise of the Caribbean 
for bikers. A okay? biker cruise, man. It's a biker <laughs> cruise. Imagine a couple hundred of your best friends, a bunch of bikers going to the Caribbean hat and Salvador Dali too. Yes. Imagine how much fun the high seas rally will be live music, great food. Well, yeah. friends, you know, that's coming up in October, but the big news is yes, because of COVID mm -hmm. and because we don't want to have social distancing on this cruise. We don't want to wear masks on this cruise. The good folks at the High Seas Rally and Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines yeah. have decided to postpone the cruise for one year. So it will happen yeah. in October of 2022. But get oh, this. Man. Yeah. The booze is yeah. free. Yes. You again, I think we broke up, Dave. I, it sounded like you said the booze is yeah. going to be free. Yeah. If you go on a cruise, the thing you spend the most money on is, is booze. the booze. Because the food's all there. You already paid for the food. Well, they're oh, giving us the booze, too. So A biker booze now. cruise? Is that what you're telling me, Dave? I'm telling you. And not only that, but you can win a free stateroom at the wonderful Moto Fest. Oh, Come yeah. by and go to the booth. Go down to the uh, High Seas Rally booth. You can win a free cruise of the Caribbean. For two. Friends, for two. For two. Yes. Here at Born to Ride. What do you think of that? Ron, Ron is this going to be legal? Are we legally allowed to do this? <laughs> I'm telling you what, they're a first class organization, guys. It's the yes, number one are. cruise. It's the only cruise for bikers. They give the whole ship to bikers. And uh, hang with this. Don't worry. They are first class. And if they're offering free booze, yeah. that is unbelievable because we know people that could that can drink them under the table and <laughs> that's going to be worth the, the price of admission alone so I first class say, I, I guess you could say they really do give a ship they yeah they do, man. do flash very well, <laughs> well we've got a great show right. coming up guys so sit tight and don't miss what we're doing because it's so important tonight and just you never know what's coming up so we're not going to tell you everything but stay tuned because you won't want to miss it Born to Ride. Let's get into our first segment. It's Born to Ride Live, everybody. Don't you move. We've got an exciting hour. Let's watch. If Instagram is your thing, we're there. We're everywhere. Follow us at hashtag Born to Ride Motorcycle Media, your number one motorcycle resource. Born to Ride caught up with two consistent winners of bike shows all around the area. Stephen Gehring Sr. and his only son, Stephen Jr., have made it a point to enjoy their family's love of motorcycles together. Their custom big dog motorcycles always seem to take first place or best in show in just about every bike show event that they have entered. But showing their bikes is just part of their passion. Riding is the other. So, on this Father's Day, let's ride along with Stephen Sr. and Stephen Jr. as the Garings fire up their big dogs and remind all fathers and sons to find something you both enjoy and to get out and spend some time together. You won't regret it. Happy Father's Day from Born to Ride.
at Born to Ride are always looking for exceptional talent in the custom bike arena. And recently, we found a truckload. Cody Hearsome and his father, Doug, owners of Razorback Hogs in Bolton, Ontario, have recently unveiled their first completed creation. And what a creation it is. Completely unique and unlike anything we've ever seen, we just had to bring you the 411 on the fertile imagination of its creator, young Cody Hearsome. But let's hear the story from the people that finally made it happen. Cody and his father, Doug Hearsome of Razorback Hogs. How it came about, I, I really don't know. Uh, 25 years of racing, two, year, two different marriages, and a son that just drove me crazy want, wanting a custom motorcycle. This whole, this whole thing is about my son. Our plans are in the next five years, Cody will take over the business and uh, I'll just be on the sidelines. I'll do a little bit of machining and give my input, but this is about Cody. Uh, having my son as a partner was something that uh, right from day one, when Cody came home from the hospital, that was my whole plan. However, it took uh, 15 years for my son to step up to the plate. As you can see, my son's pretty creative. This is pretty much all his design work. I, I have a little bit of influence there, but this is all Cody's talent with a pencil. Hi, my name is Cody Hearsome. Um, I'm along with my father, Doug Hearsome, from Razorback Hogs. Me and my father built this custom motorcycle, um, brought it to the Rats Hole at Daytona Bike Week. This has been our life for the past year, our first motorcycle ever ever completed. Um, all the design work and engineering is done by myself and my father. My father influences me more than anyone in the world. I love doing what I do, uh, just being beside him. It's just amazing to be able to do something like, like this with your family member, you know. Um, as far as schooling, I, I dropped out of school in grade 11 to come do this with my father. I thought it was... It was where I needed to go in life. Um, my buddy influenced me, Mikey Clarkson. He's the best friend I could ever have. Thanks, Mike. Um, just, you know, all the parts on this bike, there was hours upon hours of thought put into them. We must have cut about 100 motorcycles out of cardboard before we got to where we are now. And like I just said, uh, this is the first bike we've ever built. We got many pr crazy prototype designs back at the shop to be uh, forwarded into the bike market. I think we're definitely gonna make a bang in the industry. We build motorcycles unlike anyone else there. I like keeping my head out of the box. I like thinking different. I like being unique. Um, I'm my own individual. My father has the most influence on me. Um, I think together we, we butt heads a lot, but we come to a very mutual agreement. And what you see sitting in front of you right here is uh, both my father's and myself's design work. and. Um, this is our life, you know, like all our time and uh, energy has went into building this motorcycle. We devoted uh, six months of our life to design work and engineering. We've never built a motorcycle before. Uh, my father was a drag racer, past drag racer for 25 years. He raced alcohol, funny car and top fuel and I just bugged him and bugged him to get my way. I would like to um, announce something special to my father for Father's Day. This has been tough times both of us through the last six months of my life and I would just like to say to my father I love you and without you I couldn't make it dad he's the best he's the man happy Father's Day thanks bro this week we met a gentleman who was out celebrating with his son and we thought we'd feature him this week on Father's Day I was born to ride man <laughs> Tell you what, if he could ride, he'd still ride that mother. Ah, he's he waited all week for this, and he's just excited. Dad, this is for Father's Day. You can, you're born to ride. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs born. up, baby. Okay. All right. I love you. Yeah, I love you too, boy. <laughs> Get no, it yeah, doesn't that's get great. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. It's the Harley family. I was born to ride. Born to ride.
Harry Potter thing, yeah, I love you. Me too, boy. Oh, I love God. you and everything, but one day when you get old, you'll be working for me. <laughs> That's great. You're going to be working for him. And now a special Father's Day message from Emily and Ronnie Galletti. Get your motor running, head out on the highway, looking for adventure. Whatever comes our way. I know we're gonna make it happen, take the world and we're born. We're born, born to be wild. We can climb so high, I never gonna wanna go. Born to be wild, born to be wild, born to be wild. Happy Father's Day! From born to ride! Let's go for a ride! Woo! It's Father's Day, so we gotta celebrate a good day. We love you, Dad! We love you, Dad. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. We love you. We wish you, we kissed you. To all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day to Born to Ride. Thank you. Happy Father's Day of all the fathers and Born to Ride. Yeah. The motor running, heading on the highway, looking for the venture. But never come highway. This is for Father's Day. Um. <gasps> hey, what are y'all doing? Nothing. Nothing. What are you doing with the microphone and the camera set up? Oh, we were just staying here. Um doing something like because i thought we were going to go for a ride or something and i didn't know the camera what are you doing with the camera out here you got something up your sleeve um no do you no. are you sure no what are you, what are, is that camera on what are we doing i don't know <laughs> mommy set it up for something she did Oh, okay. All right, well, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Go! Go shack some bait. Seattle Engraving Center, the masters of gun customization. Featuring incredible detailed engraving, 24 karat gold plating, diamonds, gems, murals, amazing gold accents, first class quality, 100% satisfaction. More bang for your buck from their showroom. Raise money for your charity with a one of a kind prize. Seattle Engraving. You dream it, they will create it. Hey, man. Hey, we found it. It's Chopper Town. We found Chopper Town, man. Chopper Town, man.
Uh, my name is James Fish Alcorn. My company name is Alleyway Customs, and we're out of Jacksonville, Florida. Alleyway does cu full custom bike builds, uh, paint work, fabrication, hand tooled leather, upholstery, every we do everything. Uh, the ones we brought to this show is a 1982 FXS uh, chopper. Uh, we call that one the root beer bike. Uh, we also have a 1947 knucklehead, uh, pretty standard bobber. Uh, then we have our 1942 WLA, the Folsom Flathead, and we had the bike I just completed last year for uh, the People's Camp and Born Free, uh, my 51 Panhead Francine. That, that bike uh, was designed and, and built for the, for the Born Free show in California, and, and the reason I feel like that's relevant is because that's a very specific period of, of years that those bikes were for. You know, manual, manual brakes, very of the era. And that bike was something that would have been built, uh, in my opinion, it's my twist of the really early choppers, late 50s, early 60s, before you had extended front ends and really cut frames up and stuff like that. But the, the premise of that bike was uh, a paint style that, that I believe Arlen Ness uh, kind of founded, and that was a, kind of a two-tone, one side of the bike being one color, the other side of the bike being another color. I just did it really kind of subtle. So one side of the bike's uh, tangerine candy, and the other side of the bike's root beer candy. Um, and then it kind of went from there, uh, built all the, uh, a lot of the stuff out of stainless, and uh, just kept, as we continued into that competition, we were forced to keep getting crazier and crazier. So we did all the sand casting, the headlights, the tail lights, the foot pegs, the kicker pedal, you know, all that stuff. And uh, just tried to find some balance and make it all flow together, you know. Originally, the bike was going to be a lot more mellow bobber, and I was going to do a dual headlight setup. But once it went to a full custom uh, chopper, shiny chrome, everything, I wanted to condense the dual headlight idea to combine it where both headlights fit within the springs of the Springer. So you can't see, they don't stick out, they don't look like a big, you know, praying mantis head or anything. They're, they're stuck in the front end. And we do so many different styles of bikes, um, but my passion is with those older bikes. I really like the bobber style. I don't really, uh, I like a very rideable motorcycle uh, where it will handle and be nimble, perform well, where you're not really, I mean, I have had longer bikes, but I prefer not to really wrestle them too much if you don't have to, you know, but it's also important for them to, to look cool too. You know, so usually no front brake, <laughs> you know, usually really s streamlined, stripped down, you know, nothing too crazy, but very, very rideable. You know, I like the, the Indian Larry, Paul Cox style, uh, Cole Foster, the Salinas Boys stuff where the bikes look like they really flow and everything works together, you know. Man, it's super cool. You guys got a great building and, and uh, a great batch of people. You know, th there's, there's bikes. That, that go from all different spectrums inside. So it's, it's a lot to see and, and it's a very presentable event. You guys did a great job. Thank you so much for having us and uh, check us out at, uh, at Alleyway Customs. My name is Drew Seamer. I have Freak Show Fabrication down in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, it's a custom shop, we make parts, art, build motorcycles, full fabrication, some paint hot rods, stuff like that. So a lot of the guys, they have a lot of my parts on, like you said. Um, shift knobs, grips, um, I've done a lot of fabrication like the sissy bars, seats, um, bits and bots and odds and ends. Uh, some of them have my paint jobs on them. Uh, just a little bit of everything, really. A lot of my inspiration comes from a lot of the older magazines, you know, we have a huge collection of them, so we're always looking for inspiration from a lot of the greats, a lot of the older guys, um, you know, from the 70s and the 60s. Uh, and then just some of it's just kind of comes out of my head, really. I mean, just try to be different, try to do something that you haven't seen before. Uh, some kooky stuff. Keep it, keep it fun. Oh, this is, Chopper Town's been a great show so far. It's been a lot of fun. A lot of good people have shown up, a lot of great motorcycles, great vendors. Um, it's like a weird little family, a little dysfunctional family that we all have here. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to get to see your friends, meet new friends, you know, make new friends, uh, meet new people, see some really cool bikes that you haven't seen before. And it's just been, it's been a good time. It's a good, good vibe going on. Uh, 
no flex zone. It's been a lot of fun, you know? Hey, there's uh, all walks of life kind of coming in there. There's been a lot of people uh, from from older older people to young people to kids to, you know, families are in there checking it out and stuff. And, and it's just, it's, uh, it's cool. It's cool and everyone is appreciating the old school stuff, kind of the way it used to be and seeing a lot of the, the bikes and the art and, and stuff, stuff like that. Oh, it's pretty cool. Like, you know, you hear all the stories from a lot of these guys and some of the old timers, you know, oh, I had this this bike back in the day, or oh, that reminds me of this, this chopper I had. And uh, it's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's neat to see a lot of these guys. You see their faces light up when they see something that you've done and, and they can relate to it. And you hear a bunch of fun old stories and, and stuff. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. It makes you feel good, you know? It's important for uh, for for people like like me and some of my other like my peers, I guess you could say, and and you know people I work with that uh, to reach out to the younger crowd because I mean let's just face it, you know that's who that's who's going to carry this on for us and the people that are going to be our customers and people that are going to keep riding motorcycles and keeping it alive, especially with custom shoppers and stuff like that. The old dudes, the old dudes just aren't riding them anymore or, you know, it's, it's time to kind of move on to another, uh, another generation, I guess. So it is really cool when you see younger people that are interested in this to kind of like keep it going. Just to have something from Mondo, like, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, He's a legend, really, in the industry. Um, Mako, I mean, they, we all use their parts. All of us do. Um, and then, obviously, a little bit of money is nice. And uh, it was it was cool for them to donate this stuff and, and put it towards it. No, absolutely, it gets you get you a little excited. You know, you can have an opportunity to win. You know, and stuff like that. So that's that's cool. You know, a lot of us base our stuff off of something that they've done or something that that they did back in the day or inspiration from it or you know something to to take take from what they did, so it is cool to potentially get a, a little bit of something from them. I mean, he, he is, I mean, he's the godfather of choppers, I mean, that's what they call him, you know, and I mean, heck, even my uh, my Triumph in there has an old Denver Springer on it from back in the, you know, back in the 70s, so I mean, it's, it's stuffed around, I mean, you, the parts they used to make was, was great. Um, I mean, it's, those are the parts that you, you seek out as like a, a chopper guy if you're looking for stuff. So like to have that little bit of like pay it forward to like us is kind of carrying on his torch because I mean, he probably feels the same way. After, after he's gone, they're tired and doesn't want to do it anymore. There's gotta be someone else that, that has to keep it going or we're gonna lose this type of stuff and it's just gonna kind of fade to the wayside. So to have that, it feels good. It's a very, very cool feeling to have someone that's such a, such a prevalent person in the industry to, to want to support us little guys out here. Oh, me and Eric actually have a, a fairly good relationship. Uh, he comes down to my shop and shoots a lot. Um, so I've always got new bikes for him. Um, we've known each other for a while. He's a good, he's a good guy, man, and he's a. Uh, He's really trying to like to make cool things happen, to uh, to get people together and to make shows like this happen, or bring you know bring these motorcycles to the to the public, or, or really get them out there. Uh, he's a he's a great guy. I uh, I like him. You know, it's, uh, well, he's, he's got a lot of passion. And he I'm does. I'm really happy to have him part of Born to Ride. But, uh, yeah, you're lucky to have him. Yeah. He, he's a hard worker, and he, uh, he he's really trying to do some. Some stuff, but uh, you can get a hold of me probably through the easiest thing is uh, my Instagram, which is Freak Show Fab. Um, and yeah, that's probably the easiest way to, way to get through. Stay tuned, we'll be right back with more Albert Town. Saturday, July 24th, it's coming. Born to Ride's Great American Moto Fest. Born to ride live. Here we are. I'll tell you what, getting ready for, what are you doing for Father's Day? Do you have anything uh, special, a special Father's Day ride of any sort? No. No? No, I'll be be lucky just to make it through the day. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, yeah, a lot of times Father's Day turns out to be work for us. Yeah, no, I got nothing going. I might actually see if the if my daughter wants to jump on the back of the old bike and take a little stroll about the area. That's a great idea. You know? It's always it's a cool. Super she, good idea. she really does like to get out and ride. And that, that is, uh, 
you know, uh, uh, it was Ron was saying earlier, it's cool to, to get with, uh, get with your kids and family and, uh, get her done. And especially yep. when we get her done on two wheels, buddy. And also, uh, if you run out and get the current issue of born to ride the June issue, you will see many great stories about fathers and sons, uh, riding together and wrenching together. And there's even a great story about a father son team that they do the wall of death. Wow. I mean, there's some great, good stories in there. So check it out. Born to Ride June issue is on sale now and, and in, uh, on online. Go to borntoride.com yeah. and you can look at the whole thing for free. That's it. Check out borntoride.com. So much. 25 years of content on borntoride.com. And of course, it's got all of the links to all of our other uh, uh, social uh, media channels, uh, YouTube and Instagram and so many others. There's just, again, so much content out there. Uh, we are about motorcycles and the folks that like to ride them. So make That's sure that right. you uh, do and check coming out. Up, hey, we've, we've got a bunch of neat stuff coming at you here in a minute. More from the Born to Ride Vault about yeah. Father's Day and also... We're going to go back to Chopper Fest yeah. and show you some of the fun that went on at that. That's just to whet your appetite for Moto Fest, which is coming up July 24th. Don't forget Plant City, Florida. Boy, that is going to be one heck of a party. It's the ultimate biker rodeo, and mm -hmm. you can join in. You I'm going to join. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to be hosting a lot of those festivities. I can't wait yeah. to get back into some of those old school biker games, buddy. Yes, indeed. It's all there, and it's some great bands and a, a swap meet. And yeah. I'm telling you, it's going to be a heck of a day. So July 24th. Uh, and by the way, folks, if you're heading out and you have an extra front seat for a full dresser Harley, I'm, I'm probably going to be looking for one of those, you know, the, the backrest. Uh, the backrest. The backrest. The okay. backrest out there right. at the swap meet. So bring those out if, if anybody's got one. Cheap. Very good. Kind of cheap. <laughs> well, hey, what do you uh, say? What do you say? Let's get into the second uh, let's, clip let's here. Let's do it. Let's Block do it. And we'll coming at you. you. It's Born coming at you line. way too fast. Yes. Welcome to Chopper Town. Well, Chopper Town Live is about not only motorcycles, it's about the, the lifestyle. It's about the uh, culture, it's choppers, it's hot rods, it's custom vans, skateboards, surfboards. It's all about that lifestyle from the 70s, early 80s. And uh, you know, like I said earlier, we have, uh, we have, we've got builders that are world renowned. We got some guys that are building stuff in their garage. It was a builder's invitational. We've been working on this for about four months. We got together with Zach from Chopper Town Movie. Uh, everybody knows the movies, they're kind of a cult phenomenon. And uh, we work, we're working together with him to put together a live show to kind of bring that to another level. And we've, we, we've managed to uh, talk Mondo into building us a custom one-off Springer, 16 over front end. That's going to be going to the Builder's Choice Award, which is handed out tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Um, we're going to have all the builders vote on their favorite build. And the Builder's Choice Award is called the Bill Dodge Award of Excellence. Bill Dodge can't be working with us because of his recent accident, but what I'll be doing is I'll be taking pictures of his bikes for the top four, and he's going to just say the final final say who the Builder's Choice Award is. Now, the Builder's Choice Award winner, they're going to get $1,000 courtesy of FTW. We're also going to get the Springer front end, and Paco, the legendary Paco, is giving us a, uh, a frame, a hardtail frame. So whoever that lucky winner is tomorrow at 4 o'clock, they're going to walk home with a handful of awesome stuff and they're already halfway there on their next build. Well, I think a lot of these young builders are, you know, whether they admit it or not, they're influenced by these old legendary guys. You know, we've got the old guys and we've got the young guys, but they're all influenced by the Mondos and the Pacos and stuff. So if we can get those names behind what we're doing and add some authenticity, it's not that what we're doing is fake, but if they're on board with us, they're on board with us. So, it, you know, it, it's really worked out well for us. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that go behind all these bikes. And I think it's important for me, with the talent that I have as a photographer, to make sure that we get these bikes on, on the proverbial film. So the least I can do is get a one really nice or two really nice studio shots of their bikes to give back to them as a thank you. Well, it's like a surfer looking for the next wave. Um, you know, I don't really know what I'm looking for until I see it. I'm looking for something that 
is unique, that catches my eye, that I know it excites me as a, a photographer and a motorcycle enthusiast. I think if it excites me, it's, it's going to excite other people as well. So it could be that $100,000 machine built by Indian Larry and his team, or it could be that garage built motorcycle that, you know, the guy's been sacrificing life with his family and, and, and work to get that thing done. You know, it's not always about the the exterior look. There's a lot of story behind these motorcycles as well. So if I can if I can get great pictures of these bikes to help push that story along, then I've done my job. Man, I think the you know they were gracious gracious enough to, to give us this building. We were going to start out in a tent in, in the corner of uh, the property here at Thunder by the Bay. Um, once they realized what we were doing, they said we think you're going to need more room. Go ahead and use this building. And then I went in a, 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 to a meeting a couple weeks ago and they said, now how much building are you gonna need? And I said, we're gonna need all of it. And I don't think they kind of grasped what we're going to do here. They had no idea that, you know, the, what we're doing is kind of unique to the area anyway. You know, nobody else was doing it. So um, we threw them the floor plan, we put it together and everybody seems very excited about it. The, the non-chopper people, the bagger people, the old school, the young guys, everybody's digging what we're doing here and we're hoping to really expand this and maybe take this on the road in the future. Um, you know, this is only the first step and I've already, you know, you learn from your mistakes. It's not really mistakes, but we can always learn to, to do what we can do better. So we've already got ideas for the next one. So if everybody likes what we're doing now, wait till the next one. Now, nah, man, I'm just a proud to be a born ride and I'm proud to be able to, to represent these guys. I, I understand the talent and the artistry it takes to build these motorcycles. So, as a photographer, my job is to, is to get those in pictures and really represent and celebrate what those guys can do. So hopefully we can just keep pushing off from here and keep doing great things.
Harley-Davidson's is at an all-time high. People are buying Harley-Davidson's as fast as we can stock them. That makes your bike worth more than ever before. You ever wonder what that bike sitting in your garage is worth? It's never been easier than right now. Come visit us at Crystal Harley-Davidson, located in Homosasso, Florida, or visit us at crystalharley.com. How about it, Dave? How about it? What a show. Yes, Another indeed. hour of nonstop fun here on Born to Ride Live. And we'll do it again next week, friends. Yes, we will. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, past, present, future. Does that make sense? <laughs> sure it does. All right. <laughs> we'll, run with, we'll run with that. Remember, friends, all time is simultaneous. It's all happening right now. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Just remember that. Yes, indeed. Well, seriously, though, folks, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And uh, you guys have a great week, and we will see you again next week. BornToRide.com. Check it out. It's got, uh, of course, all the digital copies to all the back issues of Born to Ride, including the current one and, of course, all of the uh, social media channels as well. And don't forget uh, Boss Hog Radio Thursday night, same Thursday time, night. same yep. Facebook channel. Yes, indeed. A lot of fun with Fester Jenkins and Mama Dukes. There you go. And the rest of the gang out there. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. Have a great week, y'all. See ya. Hey, it's Debbie with Born to Ride. Tune in every Thursday, 7 to 8 p.m. on the Boss Hog Radio, a fast hour of good talk, good biker talk, what you really want to hear. That's right, folks. I'm Fester Jenkins. In the studio, though, we do have Rob from R&R. &R. Thank you. Years past, you worked with the Easy Riders... Well, we raced with these riders. Okay. And, and uh, what it was is I was uh, I, I, I raced my own team. Uh, I started with Tampa Bay Ray. I ended up with Gary Friel and some other people. So I was in it for eight years, uh, hands-on. And then uh, I got out of it completely. And then 18 years later, they called me up and asked me if I wanted to be the field boss again. So two years ago, I took over that job again. So I'm tied up with that. And it's been, uh, rodeos are great. You know, I've been doing it all my life. And uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You, they'll find out July 24th. <laughs> I was about to say, are you going to be doing the rodeo on July 24th? Yep, I'm going to be running the show out on the field. And I also got uh, two trikes I'm bringing in and a couple of solo bikes to pull with. So I'm going to let some you know friends and guests uh, pull, the, uh, pull on the trike. This is an invitational event, especially because it's the first one. We want people to come out and you know, feel comfortable trying to, to do some stuff in, in the rodeo. We're going to set the sled puller up to where it's real light. We're going to have like an 800,000, 1,200 pound class bike. So you can come out with your street bike and put some, we got some weight for you. We'll strap it to the back of the bike and you get a chance to pull the sled. And uh, it's going to, it's, you know, we'll, we can adjust the sled as, as much as we want, you know, so we can make it easy. We can make it real hard. Uh, we'll make it easy so everybody gets a chance to feel how it is. And if they want to come back the second or third round, we can tighten it up a little bit more. And we can stop them wherever we want if we have to. <laughs> I, got, I got two of my Absolutely. trikes. We got one of Tampa, Tampa Bay Rays trikes. So there'll be three trikes there for sure. And this is just a real early count. But we're setting the bikes up for solo pullers and stuff like that. So we're going to put on a real good show for them. Saturday, July 24th, it's coming. Born to Ride's Great American Moto Fest. 